Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are in New York City, New York, and I'm gonna be trying out a two Michelin star restaurant called John George's. It's gonna be pretty pricey, guys. It's $300 for the meal, and that's without tax and tips. So altogether, it's probably gonna be about $400. I'm gonna let you know if it's worth it or not. It's probably the most expensive meal I've ever paid for in my life. I don't think it's gonna be worth it, but I hope I'm proven wrong today. So join me in, in my experience at John George's restaurant. We got the menu right here. What's the difference in price between a six course and ten course? Right here, the price is oh, right there. Okay. $38 I and see. 298 Okay. So yeah, it's not too much different, right? It's like 60 bucks different, but you get four more dishes. So I think overall it's more worth it if you get the 10 course, which is what we're gonna do today. The only part of the meal that's free tonight, the bread. Taste it, William. This is my cameraman. I'm paying him a lot of money. <laughs> Michelin star bread. You didn't eat the butter, dude. Come on. <laughs> mm, how's it? Going? How's it's it? Good. Okay. Tastes pretty ready. Let's get started and welcome to our pops. On the left hand side is a sweet corn fritter with shaved black truffle. Mm -hmm. And on the right, a silken tofu with sun gold tomato and apple pie. Okay. Chef recommends beginning on the left with the fritter, followed by the tofu, and enjoy with the spoon. Thank you. Of course. That sounds Mm. Oh, that's actually really good. Now I'll try the tofu. This looks like a soup though. This is a tofu. This is what it looks like. Tofu with like cherry tomatoes, I guess. Sorry. Oh, that's interesting. It tastes, like a, it tastes like a fruit when they begin. And then you get the tofu flavor. Bubble tea. That is Golden great. Golden caviar. Mm -hmm. And a house made almond milk that's been infused with kombu and dill. Oh wow. Chef recommends giving this a gentle stir with your straw. Okay. And using it to enjoy it from the bottom of the glass. Alright, so we're gonna stir it. Enjoy. Thank you. Oh you see, see there's like little mini bobas in there. Oh my god. Well it's caviar, but like <laughs> it looks like little bobas. Let's see. Let's see if it's good. Okay, that's interesting. It's like salty because it's a little bit caviar. I'll say it's interesting. I don't know if I enjoy it. <laughs> it's interesting. That's all I'll say. Mm, I don't know if these two things mix together, man. Uh, to be honest. Definitely a little weird. Maybe I don't have the fancy taste buds yet to appreciate this kind of thing. So here we have a Japanese madai sashimi with floral infused cherries and a cherry. Enjoy! Sounds great. Thanks. Let's go. What is this? Like fruit sauce? I don't know, but. I think there's some cilantro in there. I'm not a big fan of cilantro, but a little bit too fragrant for me. Like, there's a lot of flowers in here. Plus the cilantro flavor. Mm. So the more I'm eating this sashimi, the better it tastes actually. Like it's, it gets really sweet if you dip it in the sauce. So it's kind of like eating, um, it feels like eating a fruit actually. It's very uh, fragrant and refreshing. So. Mm. So my first impression of it wasn't that good, but after having more pieces, it's pretty decent. For this next course, we have the Norwegian King Crow, served with shaved fennel and a mustard emoji. The dish is finished with a honeymoon melon juice. Mm. Chef recommends stirring this one around a little mm. so you get some of the juice and some of the mustard with every bite. Alright, so they told me to stir this mustard thing inside the melon juice. Let's get a little bit of everything. I think the sauce itself might not be a kind of sauce, but the crab is really, really, really nice. We have our heirloom tomato salad with summer fruits. The dish is dressed in an aged balsamic and cabernet sauvignon vinegar. Got this fruit right here. Oh, 
<laughs> Look at your face. <laughs> Not much to expect from here. It's just fruit. I'll grab multiple fruits at once and see. You know, maybe there's like a medley of tastes I can get. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. Yeah, it tastes like fruit with sauce. <laughs> Roasted badger flame beef with tangerine leaves and a coriander chutney. Finished with saffron coconut. Alright, I'm gonna get a big piece. Alright, get a little bit of everything. Oh, there's a lot of sauce in it. Mm. Oh, ginger taste. That's pretty good. Well, I think one of the better dishes. Wise steamed cod with crunchy maple mushroom, mm -hmm. mushroom syrup, finished with uh, lemongrass and tomato consomme. Ooh. Ooh, it's so soft. Okay. It's a nice sauce. Alright, let's go. Mm. Let me take another bite before I give my verdict here. The is very, very soft. It almost like just breaks apart. Not too salty, like very, very mild flavor. You get like the cod in there. Um, I'll say it's okay. It's not like. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I don't really taste anything. Yeah, I think it's very mild, right? It's, it's like. Very mild. Yeah, not much, not much flavor. Midway check in. What's your verdict? We had six out of ten dishes. How do you feel? It was good, but I don't think it was worth it. <laughs> Honestly. Hopefully the three main dishes we have are, are gonna be worth it. Gently steamed main lobster. Served over a summer patty pan squash mm. with a shrimp and lobster mousse stuffed squash blossom. The dish is finished with a garlic Aleppo broth. Ooh. It's the main dish, main course has to be good. Of Moment of truth. You don't look too impressed. <laughs> I think I still like the way that like Asians make it. You know? Okay, yeah, stir fry, yeah, with stir fry it. Ginger onion, yeah. It just tastes better in my opinion. But... Okay. Big chunk of lobster. Mm. Oh, that's pretty good. Damn good. Mm. No, this is very fresh. I don't taste too much else though. Like the sauce isn't that like flavorful. I think I mostly taste the lobster, which is good. I like the fresh taste of lobster. Our sauteed Hudson Valley foie gras served over toasted brioche with lychee two ways. On your left, a fresh lychee. On your right, a lychee puree. The dish is finished with a rose powder and a black olive seasoning. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Time to eat this foie gras with the olive, olive flakes on top with the lychee. I'm gonna eat it with lychee and see. Oh, it's a puree, okay. Add some lychee puree. All right, got this, let's go. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. Wow, that blends really well. It's like really soft. Mm. Oh my God. This is freaking good. Oh That's actually one of the best foie gras I've had. That was excellent, guys. 9 out of 10. This foie gras is definitely the best dish so far. It's, just, it's my last bite. But damn, this is a... Uh, I'll say this dish is the most worth it out of all of them. This is probably my favorite. Vichy puree. Yeah, Vichy puree. Mm. That's so good, yeah. American Wagyu Ooh. beef tenderloin. Served with Parmesan roasted squash and a scotch bonnet and basil emulsion. Whoa. Alright, last dish, guys. This is the Wagyu. Well, not last dish, but second last dish before dessert. I'm gonna try the squash first and then I'll try the Wagyu. Okay, okay. Dipping in some of the sauce. Very cheesy. Mm. Here's almost like a. A pasta or like a lasagna. Mm. That's pretty good. Now let's try the main course, the wagyu. Let's see how uh, medium rare this is. It's supposed to be medium rare. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, that's good. 
Now dip into some of the sauce. All right, Mono Truth. Cheers. I think the seasoning isn't as good as like what I had in other steakhouses, but the meat itself is very tender. Seasoning is lacking a little bit. I think I still think the foie gras, the previous dish was the best one. This is our black forest dessert. It's composed of sour cherry sorbet, vanilla cream, and kirschmark. Now try this dessert. Ooh! Oh crap! Just like destroyed the entire thing. Oh, I destroyed it. <laughs> Whoops. All right, last dessert, guys. Oh, what the? That's really weird. I don't like that at all. This white stuff. Oh, that's pretty nasty, dude. Yo, actually, that's pretty fucking nasty. Yo, that's actually nasty. This one, guys, this dessert, it's a no bueno. Not good at all. All right, guys, we just finished at John George's restaurant. Michelin two stars, costed us $400. So pretty damn expensive. Definitely the most I, I've ever paid for for dinner. Your verdict first about the meal. I would say it's, it was very good. Um, the service was perfect, I would have to say. And my favorite dish was probably the foie gras. Yeah, um, same here. Yeah, I'll say that really good. as well. Um, but overall, I think it was pretty good. Great atmosphere. I think it's a really great place um, on an upscale mm -hmm. from Michelin star. But I, I would say 8 out of 10 for me. 8 out of 10? Okay. Yeah. Which, do you think it's, do you think it's worth it? Like a viewer out there, should they uh, come to this restaurant? I think if you're looking at it for a special occasion, then then I think that would, that would be a great place. But mm -hmm. overall, like I think it's a little bit too expensive mm -hmm. for my mm -hmm. taste. I think the foie gras was the only dish that I think was super worth it. Like you can't get that anywhere else. Yeah. Um, every other dish was like pretty. I think it's good, but it's not worth the the money you pay for it. Four hundred dollars is a lot of money. Like you can get. You can get what, like 300 McChickens with that kind of money? Yeah, 300 McChickens, right? Out of all the restaurants I've been to, I feel like if you go past $100, it's usually not worth it. I've had meals that are like 80, 90 bucks that I felt were super worth it, uh, super worth the price and taste. Um, but I don't think any meal that I paid over $100 for felt really worth it. So if you guys can't really like afford these high-end meals and you see other people eating it, outside and they're posting on their Instagram. I, I wouldn't say like to be jealous or anything. You're not missing out on much. I don't um, think it's anything special. Yeah, it's not like too special. So like, don't feel like you have the FOMO, you know, <laughs> to get these kind of meals and feel like you're missing out on stuff because you're really not. I think we're, we're gonna get some other food right now because right, we're not even full, right? <laughs> yeah, the 10 courses, it's not like even that filling. I'm down for McDonald's. Yeah, maybe some McDonald's or some uh, <laughs> fried, Korean fried chicken, something like that, so. This is what we call real food, man. Nothing beats some fried chicken, bro. This is like Michelin 10 star. We're actually more excited for this chicken than for the Michelin 2 star. Yeah. Look at this. Looks so tasty. So good. Mm. That's way better. <laughs> That's way better. <laughs>